Let us hold fast our profession. In the tribute, chapter 4, entering into his rest. Hebrews 4 verse 1, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. A promise being left us of entering into his rest, let us therefore fear is not something the Apostle Paul would say to his predominantly Gentile hearers in the body of Christ, because this was not written by him, or to the body of Christ. We don't have to fear that we will come short of entering into Christ's rest, because the author here is talking to Israel here as they go through the time of Jacob's trouble. No promise is ever given to the church which is Christ's body, that the millennial kingdom is our promise where we shall rest. Our rest is in heavenly places and Israel's rest is here on earth. Ephesians 1 verse 3 The promise that was given to the Israelites in the wilderness is being left for the last generation of Israelites that go through the tribulation period. If they turn back or do not endure unto the end, they will not enter into their kingdom. Hebrews 4 verse 2 For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. Notice it says that Israel in both the writer of Hebrews' day and in Joshua's day had the gospel preached unto them. This was not the same gospel. The word gospel means good news. They had a different good news or gospel for those times, just as they did with the apostles and just as we do today. Today the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. In the first century, it was the gospel of the kingdom. In Joshua's day it was spoken by Caleb when he said, Numbers 1330, And Caleb stilled the people before Moses, and said, Let us go up at once, and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the children of Israel would not believe the words, because they did not have faith in God to deliver the land unto them. Did you know that the word faith is used only twice in the whole Old Testament? The first time was in relationship to Israel being told to go into the promised land and possess it. They did not do so, so God waited until that forward generation with no faith died. Deuteronomy 32 verse 20, And he said, I will hide my face from them, I will see what their end shall be for they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. Hebrews 4 verses 3 to 5, For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Those in the writer of the book of Hebrews days who did believe in their Messiah would all enter into their rest. In the tribulation period, the only way to make it into the kingdom, which is the rest Israel has long been waiting for, is to enter into that rest by believing in the person who offers them that rest, their Messiah, Jesus. Hebrews 4 verses 6 to 7, Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again, he limiteth a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Psalms 95 verses 7 to 11, For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today if ye will hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their heart, and they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. It remaineth that some must enter therein. Those who first heard from God to go in and take the land did not believe the good news of their day, and were not allowed access to the land for that reason. Hebrews 4 verse 8, For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. If Jesus had given them rest, the name Jesus is used here even though it is Joshua that is being spoken of. They are the same name. Joshua means salvation. The name Joshua does not occur anywhere in the New Testament because when it is translated into Greek and then from Greek to English, the translation is Jesus. Acts 7 verse 45. Joshua was a type of Christ, but salvation and true rest comes only from Jesus. After they had entered into the promised land, Joshua later spoke of their eternal rest in the kingdom. Most commentators wrongly attribute the future time, another day, of rest, as a heavenly rest. No Old Testament saint was ever looking for a rest in the heavenlies. They were all looking forward to a rest here on the earth in a literal, physical, earthly kingdom long promised to Israel in the scriptures. Hebrews 4 verses 9 to 10, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. God rested on the seventh day from his work after six days of creation, 
and he tells these Hebrews that there is a rest for them that are going through the tribulation period. It is found in their millennial kingdom. Hebrews 4 verse 11, Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest. God warns future believers in the tribulation period that they should labor and strive against the temptations to compromise God's word for some pottage like Esau did. They must not take the mark of the beast in order to fill their belly, or they will lose their souls for eternity. Hebrews 4 verse 12, For the word of God is quick, and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God is quick, alive. Why should the Hebrew hearers labor to enter into their rest? Because God knows the thoughts and intents of the heart, and he knows where someone is spiritually, even when they have everyone around them fooled. Hebrews 4 verse 13 Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Notice that in verse 13, we see the transition from the word of God to God himself, because the Son is the Word of God. His Word is magnified above His name, because He is the Word of God. John 1 verse 14, Israel's Great High Priest. Hebrews 4 verses 14 to 16, Seeing then that we have a great High Priest, that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an High Priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy, and find grace to help in time of need. Here the writer explains that they no longer have to go to Jerusalem to the temple with an animal sacrifice, to a priest that may not know what they are going through. They now have a high priest that has resisted all the temptations that are common to man, and he truly understands them, he knows what they need, and he can give it to them. They could have direct access to God, because of what he has done for them at Calvary. Let us hold fast our profession. In the tribulation Israel will need to hold fast their profession. They are a royal priesthood 1 Peter 2 verse 9, and not take the mark. They are to be motivated by Israel's high priest, Jesus, by his example of holding fast and going to the cross for them. Find grace. Grace is spoken about 25 times in Genesis through 2 Samuel as always being found. We don't find grace today. It finds us in the dispensation of grace. Chapter 5 The Order of Melchizedek Hebrews 5 verses 1 to 2 For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men and things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins, who can have compassion on the ignorant, and on them that are out of the way, for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. Here we see the weakness and inability of the Aaronic priesthood to totally meet Israel's needs. It was an imperfect priesthood offering an insufficient sacrifice by a priest that had problems himself. The ignorant, and on them that are out of the way, to be ignorant of course simply means to not know something, but to be out of the way means that one deliberately turned aside from the truth. Hebrews 5 verses 3 to 4, and by reason hereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself, to offer for sins. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. Jesus Christ's priesthood is so much better than that of Aaron, because Israel's new high priest did not need to offer a sacrifice for his own sins because he didn't have any. He could go right to offering for the sins of the people. Hebrews 5 verse 5, So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. Psalm 2 verse 7, I will declare the decree, the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Hebrews 5 verse 6, As he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest for ever after the order of Melchizedek. Psalm 110 verse 4, The Lord hath sworn, and will not repent, Thou art a priest for ever after the order of Melchizedek. Today have I begotten thee, Jesus was begotten as God's Son at his resurrection. He is the first begotten from the dead. Revelation 1 verse 5. He became the legal heir of all that was promised to him by his father on that day. John 1 verses 14 and 18, 3 16, 18, Hebrews 11 verses 17 and 1, John 4 verse 9, and 5 colon 1. After the order of Melchizedek, the story of Melchizedek is found in Genesis 14 verses 18 to 20, and he is not mentioned again until King David mentions the Messiah in Psalm 110 as being a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Genesis 14 verses 18 to 20, And Melchizedek king of Salem brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him, and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, 
which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand, and he gave him tithes of all. How was Christ to be a priest after the order of Melchizedek? This meant that Christ's priesthood was to be like Melchizedek's, because he was like Melchizedek in many ways. Melchizedek was a type of Christ, if not an actual pre-incarnate appearance of Christ, a Christophany, as many believe. Hebrews will explain for us the similarities in their priesthoods as we study further. Immediately upon the day of his resurrection, he was ordained a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The order of Aaron was for the Levite only, and Jesus was not from that line. He was from the lineage of Judah. Because he was ordained a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, he was to start his eternal priesthood for the nation of Israel at that time. The Aaronic priesthood was weak in that it had sinful priest who would eventually die and who would only have the blood of an animal to offer. Christ's priesthood, which came from heaven, is a perfect priesthood, and it is an eternal priesthood. Hebrews 5 verse 7, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him, that was able to save him from death, and was heard in that he feared. He offered up prayers and supplications with crying and tears. This happened while he was on the cross. Psalm 22 and Matthew 27 verse 46. Hebrews 5 verse 8, Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Yet learned he obedience. Christ was all-knowing being fully God but being fully man as well he learned what it meant to suffer hunger and physical pain. He did always those things which pleased the Father, according to John 8 verse 29, even the suffering of the cross. Hebrews 5 verse 9, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Being made perfect, this verse isn't talking about Christ being made sinless. He never sinned. It means to be a finished, or a complete work. Remember his last words? It is finished. Christ finished the work he came here to do and he was made perfect or complete at that time. The author of eternal salvation, because he did that for Israel and us, he became the author, originator, of eternal salvation. Notice the clear reference to those who obey him? No one is an author who has not yet finished a book. Christ became the author of eternal salvation for them that obeyed him once he fulfilled all that was required of him to be their salvation's author. Unto all them that obey him, that is the same program that Israel has always been under, the law. Jesus told the apostles this very thing in his commission to them in Matthew. Matthew 28 verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you alway, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Hebrews 5 verses 10 to 12, called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say, and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. The first principles of the oracles of God, the writer wants to tell them deeper things about Christ being their apostle and high priest, but they would choke on it because they are having a hard time being obedient to the simpler things. Hebrews 5 verses 13 to 14, For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. There were so many things that God wanted to say to these Hebrew hearers, but they were dull of hearing. They should have been so moved by what they heard the first time that they should be teaching others by now, but they are not and instead need to hear it all again. Most people unfortunately do not understand right division today, because they have not decided to follow the truth that they do understand. Chapter 6 Falling Away This chapter, along with chapters 3 and 10, are the three chapters that give believers today the most problems. This is where many denominations go, to teach that you can lose your salvation. If you do not understand who the book's audience is, you will be caught up in that as well, and confused. The book of Hebrews is written to the Hebrews, it is not written to the body of Christ. This is not our epistle today in the dispensation of grace, it for Israel, the Hebrews, in the future time of Jacob's trouble. It was written for that first century kingdom church made up of solely Jews, with the exception of Cornelius's household, and for the tribulation saints enduring to the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. Hebrews 6 verses 1 to 3 Therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms, and of laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this will we do, if God permit. Leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, the writer wants to go on unto the deeper things in verses 1 and 2 to help mature them, and to equip them for the time was upon them so they wouldn't fall away. 
Notice that the writer says that repentance from dead works was a foundational teaching under this Hebrew system, along with faith towards God. Notice also that the Hebrew audience is told to go on past the foundational doctrine of baptisms, plural, not baptism, singular. When you read the word baptism in the Bible, don't always think of water. There is the baptism with the Holy Ghost, being filled with the Holy Ghost, which happened at Pentecost, and numerous other times to the twelve apostles in the early Acts period. Acts 4 verse 8 and 31, there is baptism with water that John did, called, the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins, which is not how Paul baptized. Mark 1 verse 4, then there is the baptism by the Holy Spirit, not with the Holy Spirit, that Paul revealed to the body of Christ. A believer today receives the Holy Spirit the moment they are saved and placed into the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit. The writer of Hebrews was not writing to the body of Christ, he is writing to Israel, which is another proof that Paul is not the author of Hebrews, because he is the apostle of the Gentiles. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. And lastly, there is the baptism of fire, that is the baptism for all the lost in hell, and eventually in the lake of fire for rejecting Christ. This is mentioned by John the Baptist to the crowd that rejected his baptism in Matthew 3 verse 11, and Luke 7 verses 29 to 30. The doctrine of laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment are also foundational truths that every believer in Israel's kingdom program, which is on hold today, they should have understood, but they didn't. Let us go on unto perfection. The writer wants to take his hearers on unto perfection, completeness, in their understanding of God's programs found in his word, the perfection that was awaiting them in the teachings found in Hebrews, through Revelation. Hebrews 6 verses 4 to 6, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened, and have tasted of the heavenly gift, and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tasted the good word of God, and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance. Seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. What is the writer saying here? Is he saying that a person in the dispensation of grace can lose their salvation? No, he is not talking to us, the body of Christ, here. He is speaking to the remnant of Hebrews believers under the kingdom program that were saved in the time period of early Acts when the gospel of the kingdom was being preached to Jews only. Those who were once enlightened, they tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost when they were filled and baptized with the Holy Ghost at Pentecost, tasted the good word of God, the gospel of the kingdom, Matthew 3 colon 1, 4 colon 17 dash 23, like Ananias and Sapphira, they were not trusting in the gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection that Paul preached, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 14, the powers of the world to come, these were the apostolic signs and wonders like speaking in the tongues of 16 different nations at Pentecost to share the gospel of the kingdom with them in Acts 2. Another example is the healing the impotent man at the gate called Beautiful in Acts 3. And when Ananias and Sapphira died for lying to the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 5, it is impossible, if they shall fall away, to renew them again to repentance. Notice that verse 6 is part of the same sentence that begun back in verse 4. It was impossible for the Hebrew believers to be renewed again if they fell away. These verses teach exactly what they say that someone who had these experiences mentioned in verse 4 of this chapter, and they then left them, had fallen away, they could not be saved again, be renewed unto repentance. No one who was saved in this dispensation of grace has never had a taste of the kingdom of heaven nor have you been a partaker of the Holy Ghost in the way that the apostles were on the day of Pentecost. This will be the same situation Israel will find itself in during the tribulation period when the kingdom will be offered again to Israel, and this book of Hebrews will be of utmost importance unto them at that time. The illustration, Hebrews 6 verses 7 to 8, For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herbs meat for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessing from God, but that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. The writer is explaining the importance of receiving God's word into his hearers' minds and hearts so they can use it to produce fruit. He is also explaining the danger of hearing and not allowing it to have its perfecting work in their life. We have eternal security today in the dispensation of grace, but Israel did not have it in the Old Testament nor will they have it in the tribulation period. Hebrews 6 verses 9 to 12, But, beloved, we are persuaded better things of you, and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have shewed toward his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints, 
and do minister, and we desire that every one of you do shew the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Your work and labor of love, notice that the writer's Hebrew audience has good works now, and God will not forget them. His prayer is that they will continue on in their good works unto the end, so that they will have the full assurance of their salvation. Inherit the promises, he then goes on and tells them to follow, or do, what others have already done through faith and patience, and have inherited the promises already. This refers to those who die in the tribulation period, or those first-century believers that were under Israel's program, prior to the body of Christ being established. Hebrews 6 verses 13 to 14, For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. Genesis 22 verse 17, That in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Hebrews 6 verses 15 to 16, And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. After he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Again, we see the word patient used in this chapter as a trait that needs to be exercised by these tribulation saints. They must endure unto to the end of their life or the tribulation period so that they may enter into the rest of the millennial kingdom. This is what Christ meant when he told his disciples in his Olivet Discourse. Matthew 24 verses 12 to 14, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. An oath for confirmation, this example of man's oath will explain God's immutable, unchanging oath, in the next verses. Hebrews 6 verses 17 to 18, wherein God, willing more abundantly to shew unto the heirs of promise, the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things, in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation, who have fled for refuge, to lay hold upon the hope set before us. The heirs of promise, God offers a strong consolation for the suffering that is going on in these Hebrews' lives during this time of great distress and tribulation. Two immutable things, immutable means something that is unchangeable. They are the facts that God made an oath, and that it was impossible for God to lie. The hope that is set before us, this is the kingdom of rest. Here all the refugees will finally lay hold on the rest that God has promised them. Hebrews 6 verses 19 to 20, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil, whither the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus, made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The forerunner, Jesus, Israel's high priest, is their forerunner, one that goes ahead, and he is their anchor for their soul if they will take hold of him. He will be sure and steadfast to all who put their trust in him during those times.